Bonjour, mes chéris. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes en Spanish. We are reviewing the Bill Tambo Laboratories. That's the scientific laboratory, not the, the toilet. Hydro wax. Hydro wax. Carnuba based liquid wax. Get serious now. Stop doing the old accents. What is the difference between a liquid wax and a paste wax? Well, this is thicker, less dissolved. It's in a semi solid state. This is in a full liquid state with more solvents. So it's a runnier liquid. What's the difference between a wax emulsion and a solvent liquid wax? Well, wax in an emulsion, you have water, but water and wax and solvent don't mix, hydrocarbon solvent. So in order to get this lot to mix with water, you have to put emulsifiers in it, which open the waxes and the oils up to allow the water in to make one stable paste, okay? Or liquid, <laughs> emulsion, emulsion, that's the word. Um, the downside of putting emulsifiers in is the wax becomes less impervious to water. So, because it mixes easier with water, so the water from weathering will wash away a liquid wax emulsion quicker, potentially, than a solvent-based wax, which is more impervious to water. You know, if I got my pervious, it's the wrong way around there. Apologies, but you get the idea. Now, let's go on to talk about price, because we always talk about price when we talk about detailing products. Now, here's some very similar products, okay? Waxes. Uh, where's my finger? <laughs> Colonite 845. That's an old stalwart of an insulator wax, that is, which is a similar sort of product. 20 quid for 473 mil. It's American. It's going to be crazy. Crazy conversions, but we're doing it in mil. Autoglim EGP, 15 quid for 500 um, milliliters. Yes, Autoglim Extra Gloss Protection is a solvent-based wax. A lot of people think it's a sealant. Um, Adam's Buttery Wax, this is a water-based emulsion that I just showed you down there. So it's slightly different, but it's still a liquidy wax. It's close enough. It's Americans, they've got crazy measurements. So 20 quid for 473. Turtle wax, to the max wax, this one down here. This is a graphene wax, so this is like giving you the top of market, really, because 30 quid for 414 ml. That's a crazy measurement, that is. I think that's fluid, fluid, fluid ounces, fluid ounces, you know, whatever they, whatever they is. God, I can't speak today. Fluid ounces, if, just think a fluid ounce is roughly about 30 millimeters, something like that. Some crazy, some crazy fool come up with fluid ounces. Crazy fool. <laughs> and then we got Built Hamber Hydro X and get none or plain. Um, 25 quid for 500 mil. So the first thing about this review is Hydro Wax is not cheap. Normally Built Hamber um, smashes the other products on price, especially when some of these products are about to come over from America as well. So it's not cheap, um, which is unusual. Because this Finny Wax here is $14.99, which is an absolute bargain. And I think Bill Hamber prices are going up soon. We're just before 14th of March, but I hear they might be going up by a couple of quid. But at the time I shoot this, 25 quid. So if you're the bargain hunter, the first thing I want to get across is you're probably going to want to use Finny. Oh, sorry. Jeez, I'm getting given bad information. Double Speed Wax is the cheap one, $14.99, with the... With the uh, you know, hydrophobic components. Finny wax is about 30 odd quid or something like that. So you'll go for that. Or if you really want the cheapest on the market, you're not worried about durability, pound for pound performance. You're probably going to go with something like Auto Glim Extra Gloss Protection, which is also a really good product. Use that for years, you know. Um, now, that's the due diligence done on pricing. Now let's also, oh, you do get a cloth and some applicators. Bill Hamber, when I first sort of come across the brand, they used to use white applicators many years ago. Then they went to these teardrop shaped ones. Now they've gone to these and these are even softer, probably because they fit their tin. That's probably why they've done it. But they look like two good applicators there, which is nice. And you get a microfiber towels. I'm not the biggest fan of the Bill Hamber microfiber towels. There's nothing majorly wrong with them, but I just don't like the stitched edges, you know. And I've got my own little, little ones that I use. I'm a microfiber snob. Uh, I'd almost think maybe Built Hamble would be better off just get, selling the bottle of products. I think, you know, that's what all the other ones do. But 
maybe they feel that they have to sell these as well or, or some of their customers won't be able to apply their products. So I don't know. There we go. Now, how do we, let's read some things here, first of all, which is really important. Let's get this nice and stable. Hydrowax is a superior, easy to use, last stage treatment for protection of highly finished automotive paint systems. Okay, high grade T1 carnauba wax is used as a backbone to provide deep rich gloss, while unlike other automotive waxes, excellent gloss, ease of application, and buffability, so sorry, ease of application and buffability are provided by other gloss enhancing molecules. I love the word molecules, sounds all good. That's come straight from uh, Mr. Hanbury himself. Molecules. Um, Hydro Wax is not an abrasive polish. If your paintwork is faded, feels rough, or has not been polished for a long period of time, it would be necessary to use an abrasive polish and or paint clay before application. Yeah, so if you've got contamination, you clay it. If you've got swirly, faded paint, you polish it. And Built Hamber have one other liquid product called uh, some sort of micro cut and finish, I think it is, with wax and abrasive in it that you could use to polish and wax. But this is just a liquid wax. They also have a paint preparation system called Cleaner Polish. Um, now, we've talked about this on other videos. This is That's their old bottle, by the way. It's all, the branding's all new and it will come in a bottle like this. So this assumes that you have prepared your paint properly for protection, okay? When we could talk more about that if you're new to detailing. Some people might appreciate me talking a bit more about that, but most of you are reasonably, you know, experienced. So you know the difference between polishes and waxes. This is protection. Let's get on and put this down. Now, actually on this section of paint, I have used the um, primer, cleaner polish, just on this quarter, this area here. And down here, it's unpolished. Is that little stone chips or is that one of those little stone chips? Ooh, nasty. Um, right, I just want to do some different tests and I've never used this product before, guys, so work with me. Come with me. Now, the first thing with these liquid products and wax is if it gets cold, it can go solid. So I think Built Hamber Revise put it in warm water in the directions if it's all chunky and solid just to soften it up, okay? But it's cold today and the product isn't is is ready it doesn't need heating up or anything like that shake it well um yeah stand it in warm water if you need to work on shaded cool panels using the sponge applicator provided applying light circular motion sparingly to allow uh, and allow to dull for five to ten minutes buff to a high shine turning the microfiber cloth frequently uh, both the applicator and microfiber can be washed do so with um no liquid, uh, what they call conditions, just plain non-bio to wash them. Right, now come to me. Come to me. Right, good improvement is they've got these little nipples on there now, so that this never had, this hasn't got this, so I had to put my own lid on it. Um, and it's a squeezable bottle, so I should be able to just squeeze it out. But if I do, yeah. So that's solvent. I recognise the sort of solvent, a bit like their cleanser fluid. It's probably the same solvent, which is a really cool solvent, whatever it is. Um, let's just put, well, it's quite loose. It's quite a loose liquid. You can see the waxiness to it. So let's just put three little dots down. And let's come over here and we'll just get a bit of light so you can see what we're doing. Just prime our applicator so we've got a bit more wax all over it and here we go so let's just work the waxy over the surface this really reminds me of uh, extra gloss protection from auto glue it's it's like it is like a paste wax but it's like a thin paste wax and it's just easier to spread so i'm just going to follow that swage line there and just end it there it's very easy to spread very loose so there's more you can see there's a lot more solvent in this just make sure so you need to be careful you need to give it i always find it's you know best to work in circles with wax because you just get that coverage that's nice and easy to spread 
Now, one thing I'm noticing is the sm solvent smell. So that's the downside of a solvent-based liquid wax, is you probably want to be in a ve well-ventilated area. I've got the door open and the garage door closed today because it's, it's a bit unpleasant out there. So what will probably happen is I'll start sniffing, and you'll see me go every two minutes because I'm, I'm a sensitive man. <laughs> Very sensitive, the old snub. Solvents, as I've talked about many times, so we're just gonna leave that there. And what we're gonna do is I would be using one machine with a medium soft pad to use the polish to prep it. And then I've got two shoal concept spiders here on these free spinning DAs that I could use to apply the product. So let's just see how we get on applying these by machine. Okay, don't wanna to use too much wax. Can we see the waxiness? And let's just pop that down there, doing this one-handed. And just like a polish, I guess, just doing that quickly over my little target area. You don't need to, I just, you're gonna get a bit more consistent coverage if you do that. And what I'm gonna just do is plonk that there. Get in there. Can you see? What can you see? Yeah, that'll do. Right, I'm going to do this mega quick on speed five. So easy. That's it, really. I've got the coverage. I'm out of battery power. I'm out of battery. Well, I'm going right there. So we just need to switch batteries. So very easy to put this out over a car. Very loose. And I can see here it's starting to dry. So if I had like a Predator Vision mask, all the solvent will be vaporizing away now, coming off out the panel. And uh, that's when the wax starts to solidify as the solvent comes out of it. And then you buff it and it bonds a bit to the uh, panel. Not, not some sort of scientific bond, but it just like, <laughs> it just dries on the surface and bonds. So if you have an oily wax, it doesn't tend to bond so well. So just wax and solvent is decent. Now, are we dry down here? This is the bit I applied by hand. Not quite, no, not yet. So it's gonna need the five to 10 minutes. Um, so do we wait? Yeah, there won't be that much longer left to go. So we've covered price. Oh, I'll tell you what we can do. What we're gonna do is just get some on here. Can we check it? Oh. Yeah. Drop the battery on my foot. Never take a battery off and leave it. Leave it there. Oh, how come I'm low on power? I, I never get low on power. I haven't charged my batteries. I've always got one. Hold on. Oh no, that's low at all. What a clown. Oh well. Oh well. I'll put these in charge. I'll have to go in, go in by hand. Outrageous. Hold on, where's the one I've used? Over here. Right, let's get some wax on here. Here we go. Oh, now hold on, yes. No. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What I'll do is I'll pause it here. Okay, guys, I'm back and the film has dried. One thing I'm learning is that the machine... I find just puts a nicer, thinner film effortlessly down on the panel. With the, when you're applying it by hand, you just want to work it a little bit to make sure you've got the thinner film, like they say in the instructions. Um, so let's give this a buff now, guys. I, wanna, I always want to get the camera on the light so you can see how good and how easy this is. So, well, the film, there we go. Well, that's quite, that is pretty easy. But that film has a certain, let me use the word toughness to it, but it's not a, it needs a buff to get it off. And that's usually 
a sign that's good in terms of durability, but it makes it more important to get your application right, or you're going to be, you know, when you've got to go over an entire car, if you put it on really thick, you're going to have to buff quite hard, but hopefully you can get a good idea here that I'm not having to go on overdrive, but I can feel the, the film. So I'm just trying to let the microfiber towel do all the work. And now normally it's a good idea to flip. So let's just see if we've got a clean finish there or if we've got any smudges. We're looking pretty good. Look, water spot there or something, I don't know. Pretty good. Right, let's flip. Now I've got a nice thick area here where I didn't do a good job of spreading it. Let's try on the thick area. It seems pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let's keep going. Right, I just want you to see it. There, you can see there. So it doesn't come off in like one swipe. It needs like little smaller circle swipes like this. There we go, done. Get the old torch out as well and really go looking for it. But that feels nice. Yeah, it feels nice, waxy. Good gloss on there now. It's jetting up a bit. Right, what I'm going to do, guys, I've prepped this side of the panel with Rupes Pure just to strip off what was there. And I'm going to do a 50 50. And I was thinking, should I do a 50 50? with the Adams Buttery Wax, but this product has no durability. Um, or the I could do the Turtle Wax Graphene thing, which will last about two, two to three months, which might make a good one. But I want to do it against this, because <laughs> this one is a tough little wax that really lasts and is really cheap. And I don't think, my gut instinct is that Hydra Wax won't be able to keep up with double speed wax. So I think it's a better product to be benchmark it against. So let's let's do it. Let's do it while I'm filming. Oh, I need a bit of tape. Let's do it live. Let's do it live. Don't worry about it. Some of you hate the, you know, you want a really fast flowing video with all the edits, but you know you don't get that here. So let's go and get my tape. I can't get round the car. Miserable tape, look at that. That's my prize. It's, I'm just using the box. It's not Gion things. It's um, my prize for this month's patron uh, contest. I've just got to think of the, the question. Look at that. What a, look at that car. Just look at it. Got to wear the lens out. My camera's staring at the car. Right, let's bring that down. Now, well, you, what are you doing here, John? We're taping off. What do I get up to? I do. Right, oh, I didn't get the pen. So let's go in with our liquid wax. And just get a bit of the old liquidy wax there. Let's lift you in. It's going to be a bit shaky. This gives you a good idea though. It's so loose, look. That's what's nice, but it does need that circling to spread it. You get a bit of filling, see? And a nice big deep scratch there. Come back a bit when I wet it. Let's 
It's pretty thick line. And let's now open up our double speed, our double speed. And we'll just give this a little prime. We're using the other side. Get our money's worth out of this applicator. I'm not going to get waxy fingers. There we go. So we've got a good amount of the wax and. Ah! I keep dropping stuff today. Right. And let's just put this on. It's going to be quite thick, isn't it? Try and just get it thin. Double speed spreads well, but when it dries, it needs a bit of buffage. So you do need to really sort of get a thin layer of it as well. It's not quite a full-on Popeye arm one, but it done half, you know, for a 14 quid wax, or what does it cost? It done half last well, though. So that's, you know, should have a decent thin layer of it there. Yeah. Good. Now, what I'll do, guys, is I'll stop the video here because that's going to need, I'm going to leave this for 24 hours just to fully vape out and then do some water testing on that and chemical testing, see which one I can get rid of with Surfix HD first. Um, and then I will do my conclusions. We'll finish the video off. Okay, guys. We've got the Hydrorax on the right, double speed on the left. Let's have a look at the Hydrophobidilly. Very similar, isn't it? It's identical. Probably the same well, wax with hydrophobic stuff in it. That's just definitely not just Carnuba because it's not that repellent. It's good because double speed is very repellent. Let's see if we can spot, lower the angle and spot any differences. Well, they're about the same. Look at that. So what I'm gonna do now is put some Surfex on it and let it sit on there for half an hour and see which one is wiped out the most. Do you want to see this? Oh, I left it around here. No, so there's the surfex. Um, I'll, I'll do that now and we'll come back. Okay guys, the liquid's been on here for longer than it should have been, probably about 45 minutes, but don't ask, fingers get in the way. Interesting, isn't it? You can sort of see the swipe marks. I feel like where the lines of the product aren't level. Let's just get a bit of an angle here. Oh, hold on. Put this down, sorry. It's going to look dodgy. Okay. And let's just do it. You know what? Isn't it a good, the DA, that's the double speed, isn't it? And that's the um, Hydra Wax. The double speed seems to have this little area in the middle, which is suffering the most. I didn't expect that. I thought double speed would, double speed would be, the, well, that's pretty similar. So there seems like the middle of the double speed. It's just there seems a bit degraded. So that's pretty good. It seems kind of similar to double speed. But just from that little simple test with the one hit of detergent, the Hydro Wax seems to be doing better. But in reality, I don't know. I think they're probably very similar durability based products that are going to give you, you know, three, four months, something like that, depending on how you look after them. Okay guys, so let's wind this video up now. Whenever we tend to rate products, we tend to look at stuff like this, don't we? So price, application, buffing, the technology, because some products you might, you might want an SO2 wax, or you might be going for a graphene wax, or 
something like that. You know, slickness, hydrophobia, hydrophobicity and durability, they tend to be a lot of the things that people want. So we can keep this very, very simple. Are you going to buy Hydra Wax from Built Hamber? Hold it up. If or based on price. No, you're not. If you don't care about anything other than price, you're going to go with Autoglim. We've covered that already. So you're not going to buy it because it's cheap. Application and buffing. Are you going to buy it because it's the nicest liquid wax on the market to apply? It isn't really. I, I think the emulsions, you know, that's the advantage of the water-based kind of stuff. Um, and the Adams Buttery Wax is one of the lightest buffing products I've ever used. I love the way it glides off the panel. So you'd go with that really if you if you're really interested in the application and the buffing um and there's less solvent coming off the adams buttery wax because it's water-based now technology you're not going to really buy hydro wax because you're looking to try a new technology it's primarily a solvent wax with some hydrophobic material in that i think so you would be going with something like turtle wax you know turtle wax to the max graphene wax if you wanted the latest technology because it's got graphene in it. So you're not going to use it because of the technology. I also don't think you're going to buy it because of the slickness. When you buff, it's nice and glossy. Don't get me wrong. You know, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it feels lovely, like a freshly kind of waxed thing. But under the microfiber, it doesn't have that SiO2 slickness. So you might buy like a SiO2 ceramic wax. I think Maguire's got a liquid one, haven't they? A ceramic liquid one. I don't, want to, I don't know what it's like. But you might try something else for that. So, so far, well, it's not, it's not looking good, John. But then we come to the last two. This product is very hydrophobic. It's more hydrophobic than Colonite 8, 845, which has great durability, by the way. But it, it's like a solvent-based wax, but I don't think it has any you know, hydrophobic polymers in it. So it sets and it's it's nice and durable, but it doesn't bead so quite so well as this. Uh, and none of these, Autoglim EGP, no, Adam's Buffy Wax, Turtle Wax, more of a sheeter. This stuff beads like crazy. So you, you're going to like it if you like hydrophobicity and durability, guys. It seems for a, for a liquid wax not to have um, any issues around sort of being more impervious or less impervious to water you know you can't wash it off the panel it seems quite similar to the double speed so these are the two reasons why i think you might be looking at this product and the third reason is it works well on machine application which i like machine application what's the other reason guys well i know this sounds silly but it's a built hamber product and um you know i love the brand i really love the brand and that can swing it for me, you know, a little bit, that, that it's a brand that I'll use, you know. So it's a very good product, this. Um, but you've got everything, you've got all the reasons there for buying it, the reasons not to buy it. There is one white elephant in the room, and that is, that is the double speed wax. Even though I've given this quite a hard wrap for being a bit hard to buff sometimes, it felt actually easier to buff than this. There's a bit of resistance when you buff this. Might be because of the way I've put it on. But this actually seemed to come off the test panel really nice. So the double speed wax, I'm telling you, it's hard to beat. And that price point of it is phenomenal. If you do a good application and get it on thin, then, um, you know, it is, it is easy to work with. So <laughs> it might be competing against itself. And these paste waxes tend to last a long time. The only thing is I don't like applying paste waxes by machine. I can't get my machine polisher pad into the into the tin, whereas I could have put this out on the machine. So, you know, I'm quite glad I've got both um, products there. If you have a machine polish and you like machine application and you like a hydrophobic liquid solvent wax, then I think you should check out Built Hamber Hydra Wax. That's it for this one, guys. It's quite simple. Um, it is very informal. Like you say, you know, we will get the gloss meter out, start doing the slickness things. Don't really know. What I'm going to probably do is build up lots of liquid waxes and do that sort of comparison test maybe in six months or a year's time where we pick a liquid wax that can do the whole lot. And I have no idea what the winner's going to be um, because 
they've all got their little strengths and weaknesses. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Let me know what you think of the product. Stay tuned. Do not forget to subscribe. There's loads more coming on the channel. We're flying at the moment, smashing it all out, um, literally and metaphorically. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Where was I?